And now closer to home, we focus on what oil prices, or rather the drop in oil prices during the last six months means to us in Wyoming. University of Wyoming economist Rob Godby offered his insight earlier. Did economists know that this was coming? No. <laughs> Uh, this was not expected by very many people. In fact, it, it was very unanticipated. Um, in hindsight, we think we know why it happened, but um, no, I, I think it was, it's really fair to say that the markets expected it just the opposite, that oil prices would stay where they were and, and at normal levels. So what happened? So there's, there's a lot of things. Um, during the summer, um, certain producers produced more oil than we expected. And at the same time, during the summer, parts of the world economy slowed down a lot more than we expected. So for example, Europe is still struggling. China had its slowest growth rate in almost 25 years. Um, the United States is growing, but the rest of the world wasn't. So that lack of demand and then a sudden increase in supply, not a huge amount, but just enough to make a difference. So Libya came back online during their, you know, while it's still chaos there, they're producing a lot more oil than anybody expected to. So too much oil, too little demand, prices fall. Why was it that there was the expectation that they would either continue or rise? You know, I think part of it is just sometimes the best prediction is what happened yesterday, you know, whether it's the weather or anything else. So people get used to oil prices being at one level, and then they just presume that that's normal. And so expectations kind of build that in and people make plans. But if you look at like the activity that's gone on in the Bakken, activity that's going down in Texas and New York, you know, all this fracking, oil and gas, that was all predicated on $100 oil prices, which made that affordable to do. Even though gas prices are low, natural gas is coming up with oil and oil made money. So, you know, gas was almost a free product. So we had a lot of activity and we're part of the problem. We actually produced we're producing a lot more oil than we ever have. We're now the, you know, depending on your numbers, third largest producer in the world of oil. And we're a big user, but when everybody else stops using it, we end up just kind of tipping the scale towards too much supply. And so what we found was, you know, there's a nice alignment of, of outcomes. And suddenly, oil prices just fell off a cliff. And the big change in this market was in the past, Saudi Arabia, kind of the swing producer of OPEC, they would have moderated the price. So what, what they would normally do is they would cut back production to kind of balance supply with demand. And they would do that to strategically affect prices. And what it seems to be the, what seems to be the case is that they've chosen not to do that. And part of the reason they've chosen not to do that is as all this new supply comes onto the market, Iraq has recovered, they're beginning to produce oil. Um, we're producing a lot of oil. Russia wants to produce a lot of oil for their own internal reasons. That's really their only revenue source. And of course, they have a lot of issues with sanctions, things like that. So we have all these political reasons why other people are producing oil. If Saudi Arabia, I think, felt, if they dialed back, they were just giving their market to other people. And so why would they do that? If prices are going to be low, they're going to make sure that they're producing. And in some ways, they, I think they began to realize this regime of high oil prices actually created greater supply. Because it initially, if you leave high oil prices out there, it's good for you if you're a seller. But it also creates a lot of incentives to create all this technology like fracking, yeah. which is a direct result of 20 years, almost, well, 10 years now of relatively high oil prices. You know, we've had some drops in the 90s, drops in the Great Recession. But outside of that, these were the incentives that have driven just technological change. Um, and they drive, you know, global politics. Well, if, if this is going to be the new trend, then what does that mean in terms of Wyoming's economy? Because we've, you know, We've adapted, we've survived these booms mm -hmm. and busts, we've relied on the energy industry for so long. Yeah. Um, how do you think that's going to factor into what we do from here on out? Right, so it's going to affect our economy in two ways, um, three ways actually. So first of all, state revenues. Estimates are if the price of oil drops about $5 a barrel, uh, we lose about $35 million in state revenues on an annual basis. So right now we're looking at a uh, $245 five million dollar plus decline in our revenues if they sit if they stay at current levels uh, that's a big hit to our revenue 
uh, which means that this could mean cutbacks at the state again. Uh, we also have, you know, kind of flat ga natural gas prices, another big part of our revenues. And coal has been chugging along, but it hasn't been exactly really strong lately. It's still pretty steady, but there are worries in the future with carbon regulations. So on the revenue side, this is hard. Um, but that's because our state has chosen to derive most of its revenue from energy commodities. Uh, on, the, on the employment side, it's actually harder to tell. So we didn't have a lot of oil activity going on in the state. We had some and it was growing, but we aren't North Dakota, we're not Texas. So it will hurt us, but more in what isn't going to happen that was planned than what is already on the ground. So that part is not quite so bad. It just means that growth we could have anticipated may not happen. And then the third part is, this is like a big tax cut. I mean, when everybody's gas price goes down to $1.75 a gallon or $2.50 for diesel, and we're in a state like Wyoming where you drive everywhere, this is a huge boon to families who now have extra disposable income. I mean, nationally, this fall in gas prices is bigger than the Bush tax cut that came at the beginning of the Great Recession. We're looking at this as being like a $200 billion stimulus to the economy, which is, you know, people forget that before there was the Obama stimulus, there was the Bush stimulus in the same recession, and this is actually bigger than that year that we all got, what, five, $600 on average uh, income tax checks. So this is, you know, it could stimulate the economy. It could actually do good things. It could cause people to drive to Yellowstone more often, or it could create additional tourism. It could create additional traffic in malls. It could cause more people to go out in restaurants. It mm -hmm. could cause people to come to the University of Wyoming to go to school. We don't know. Whenever these busts happen, there's always this word, diversification. Right. Well, okay, um, if we don't get going on it now, it ain't going to happen. <laughs> do you think it is a feasible concept, and do you think we'd see it in the next 20 years? In our state? In our state. Uh, it's very difficult to diversify such a small state. Um, we don't have any, any natural economic centers that create, you know, the additional kind of snowball effect of, of more activity. So our economy, for better or for worse, is going to be probably locked in around energy commodities. Some people would call it diversified already, right? We get oil, gas, and coal revenues. And to some people, that's diversified because, you know, Kentucky just gets coal or Texas has oil and gas, but they don't have coal. So um, the short answer is I, I can't imagine, you know, we're not going to see Silicon Valley open in Wyoming in the next 20 years. But um, I, I do think that we're slowly diversifying, um, but we are going to be a boom and bust state. And, you know, this is just another bust. The good news is it's not the 1980s where that was like our only revenue horse. Um, now we have natural gas, which is not doing as well as it was a few years ago, but it's still doing well. We have coal that's doing reasonably well. There's a lot of threats in the future with carbon regulations, but for now it's still steady. And so oil went down, but the big plus in our budget recently was that oil had gone up. So, you know, this is really where we might have been a few years ago. So if anything, we're kind of flat. Um, so that's better than a bust. Rob Godby, it's always a pleasure. <laughs> You're welcome. <laughs>